Great radio stations across the land, JoePags.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email. It's all right there, plus the live video feed. It's the Joe Pags Show. Glad to have you here. Really glad to have this guy on. He, he's an incredible speaker. He's over at the Daily Wire. Uh, he also um, is, is a great talk show host. He's doing a podcast with Ted Cruz and maybe more in the works. We'll talk about that perhaps maybe down the line. It's Michael Knowles. Michael, how are you? I'm doing very well. It's an honor to be on the show. Hey, it's my honor. I was telling you before we started today, I was floating around YouTube and uh, and saw you just annihilating some people on college campuses, <laughs> and you do it with such great depth of knowledge, and you do it with uh, a, a smile on your face, and you're not yelling and screaming at anybody, and even when they're heckling you, you're still very calm about it. I don't think I could be, but I found <laughs> your knowledge about Columbus something that made me want to reach out, and, and I was hoping to have you on, and thanks for doing it today. Oh, it's it's a pleasure. This is a favorite topic of mine. It drives me absolutely insane yeah. when people tear down these statues of Columbus because I find the people who tear down the statues of Columbus don't know anything about the guy. Well, well, not only that, but I don't know if you saw this. In Portland, they're so mad at Columbus that they tore down Abe Lincoln and Teddy Roosevelt last night. So I'm not, I mean, they really did that. I, I'm, I'm confused. They said it was to protest Columbus Day. So, so let's start from the start. Christopher Columbus, when I was in school, I'm older than you, I'm 53, uh, or 54, uh, went to school, graduated in 1984. Columbus was great. He took that journey. Wow, we found the new land. Everything's wonderful. Look at what it became, this, this wonderful land, America. Today, I think we're facing the first generation that was taught in school that Columbus was an evil, genocidal rapist. And these young people who were eight or nine when Barack Obama took office really believed that. Straighten me out on this. Was he an evil, genocidal rapist? He was not evil. He was not genocidal. And I don't think he was a rapist. I mean, the, the trick about these things is there are these sins that Columbus committed yeah. that nobody that nobody denies. I mean, I, I don't know in that one in particular, but the, the big one they hit him on is slavery, that he sold Native Americans into slavery, which is true. He did this for some uh, Native Americans. Obviously, slavery long predated Columbus. It existed long after Columbus. It actually still exists in certain parts of the world today, but he participated in that and nobody's defending it. The question is, what is the context of Columbus's life? Was he particularly wicked in his time? No. The people who accused him of all the things you say, genocide, rape, uh, all sorts of madness, murder, all these things, what is the value of those historical documents? Well, it turns out that where most of this comes from, and this really cropped up again in 2006 when a document from a guy named Francisco de Bobadilla was, was discovered, is that most of these claims are coming from Columbus's political opponents in the New World, right. the guys who were vying for power in the Indies. It, it would be like saying that Donald Trump is a no good, awful person. Here's my proof. I have an essay written by Hillary Clinton. I'm not saying that it's, this is evidence that exonerates Trump. I'm just saying you can't rely on that kind of a document, especially exclusively. And frankly, I just think, as Carol Delaney said, she's a wonderful historian of Columbus. The left is accusing Columbus of things that other people did. There, yeah. I mean, certain of these things happen, but they weren't committed by Columbus. I think the real reason they go after him is, is not because of anything in particular about him. I doubt they've ever read a book about Columbus. It's because Columbus is a symbol of Western civilization. He was a devout Catholic, a man of not particularly noble birth, extraordinarily courageous, intrepid, came out, discovered a new world, and then brought European civilization to that world. And because the left hates that civilization, they're going to hate Columbus, who's the symbol of it, which I suppose is their prerogative, but it drives me crazy when they lie about the guy. It's uh, Michael Knowles, the host of the Michael Knowles Show. Go and find him on YouTube. You're going to love his his speeches, his lectures, and the back end. I love the Q&A segments. I just, I just think are amazing. So we're trying to litigate something that happened 530 years ago. And, and of course, Columbus, I don't know, I checked, he's not around to defend himself. And, uh, and the only thing that we can go on is, like you said, the Twitter from 1490, which said uh, Columbus sucked because they were on the opposing side. We do have his own words, though. We have his own journals. And what the left is really hanging their hats on is the fact that he said something about how nice these people were, how serene these natives were, that they could easily be enslaved or you could slight them or you could you know, smite them of the neck and they wouldn't even know it or they wouldn't even fight back. Did he say things like that? And if so, what did he mean? Why would he say that? Well, he did. So the first group of natives that he encountered were the Taino Indians. As always, by the way, this is just a general rule. The real history is much more interesting than the ideology on either side. Right. What actually happened is, is so much more fascinating. So he, he encounters this group of natives, the Tainos, and he says specifically to the Spaniards who were traveling with him, he said to treat these people well and don't take advantage of them because they were very nice and helpful. Now, the Tainos, according to Samuel L.A. Morrison, the Pulitzer Prize winning historian, the Tainos had some scars 
scars on their bodies. This was because not all of the Indians were so peaceful. There was another tribe of Indians called the Caribs. The Carib Indians are where we get the term cannibal from. They were practicing cannibals. Morrison says that they considered babies, which they bred to be a particularly toothsome morsel. This was not a great group of guys. As always, the natives were, like, like anyone else in the world, they were a mixed bag. Columbus did send some Indians back into slavery. There is no question about that. Now, obviously, the system of slavery is a little different than what we would have called American chattel slavery. Yeah. But was this because of some racial supremacist sort of system? Absolutely not. Actually, Christopher Columbus adopted the son of a Native American friend of his. Generally speaking, if you're some genocidal maniac, you don't ad adopt the children uh, of your of your conquered peoples and and raise them as their own. Now, there was another system that did grow up that, that was a really properly slave system, a really hideous system, the repartimiento system and the encomienda system. Uh, that was developed by the political opponents of Christopher Columbus, particularly a fellow named Roldan, who had ba basically backed Columbus into a corner. Right. I think two things are true here. I think he was th the greatest navigator of his age, without question. This is a guy who traveled to Iceland, Ireland, Africa, all over the place, and then discovered the new world. Uh, unbelievable. And, and on that first voyage, very little evidence he had anything beyond a compass and the stars to make it to this new continent. So I think that's obviously true. He's one of the greatest explorers that ever lived. On the other hand, as a politician, he wasn't particularly talented. He was outmaneuvered almost every step of the way. He had people slander him. He was sent back to Spain in chains at one point. And this, by the way, was also pushed by the Spanish crown, very likely so they wouldn't have to pay Columbus money that they owed him. He fought this calumny his whole life. The, those two things can be true at once. The great discoverers are not necessarily the great bureaucrats. Yeah. Does this mean that we need to tear down his statues and his memory? Of course not. None of us would be here today without Columbus. It's Michael Knowles, the host of The Michael Knowles Show. You know, what's interesting about what you just said, a couple of things are very important. Number one, you've got your facts wrong. Slavery started in 1619. I checked the New York Times. Okay, that's the first <laughs> that's thing. Good point. Uh, the, the second thing is, are you alleging to me that natives were conquering each other and left scars on families? And, they, uh, and, and I say this, you know, uh, of course, in this tone of voice, because I watched your response when somebody said we should give all the, the land back to the Black Hills or all the Black Hills back to whichever uh, tribe of Indians today and you said well well who do we give it to because they stole it from these guys and they stole it from those guys and they stole it from the other guys and if you do the dna on so-called native americans or indigenous people as if they came from the soil they're really from europe and asia so at the right. end of the day they, who did they conquer to come here and, and and who was conquering them that they had to run you know th through the bering straits to come here so at the end of the day you ask a great question in one of these back and forths and, and i'd love for you to reiterate it here how far back do you want us to go do we go back to Adam and Eve and find their right. lineage? I mean, we're all of their lineage, if you believe. Uh, or do we go back to the people right before what happened in Mongolia? Do we go to the Chinese before the Chinese, before Japan? Yeah, what, what do we do to make the world right other than this experiment we did here in the United States, which is we're so diverse and so wonderful and offer so much opportunity and equality that a million people come here legally a year and another million try to come here illegally? At what yeah. point do we say we've gone back far enough? I think your point, Pags, on going to Adam and Eve is so crucial here because when you get all the way back to Adam, you see, gosh, that, that fellow wasn't so great either because of original sin. And I think this is the conservative right. insight here. Because this is a fallen world, it's a broken world, we're not going back to Utopia or the Garden of Eden anytime soon. We have to deal in that reality of all of these broken people. You, you could you could criticize anybody throughout history. We see the left doing this now. They're not just tearing down statues of General Lee. They're tearing down statues of General Grant. Right. <laughs> General Grant, right. of course, you know, w wins the Civil War. They're tearing down Lincoln and Washington and everybody else. And you can find le legitimate things to criticize in all of these people. You'll notice that the left, though, when they exalt their own heroes, people like, for instance, Che Guevara, a Hispanic person, by the way, who would not exist if not for Christopher Columbus. That's another side benefit of Columbus. He, in, he invents the idea of the Hispanic race, neither here nor there. They'll exalt these people like Che Guevara. They'll ignore the hideous crimes and sins that they've committed because it serves an ideological end. It actually, in my view, goes all the way back to Marx and the many cultural actors who, who have followed in Marx's footsteps, which is that Marx called for the, quote, ruthless criticism of all that exists. The, that's, a, that's a profound wow, yeah. project. 
to criticize everything. You've heard President Trump talking about the dangers of critical theory recently. What's the theory? The theory is to criticize. And so, of course, you can. You, uh, many of the things that are said about Columbus are true. In, in the case of Columbus, most of the things I think are not true, but some of them are. The question is, where are you criticizing from and what is the point? We're all broken. We're standing on the shoulders of giants, particularly the giant Christopher Columbus. And we think that we're flying. A, a civilization that is willing to ignore and lie about our forebears and then to have such ingratitude for them, I don't think that kind of a civilization can long endure. I couldn't agree with you more. You know, it's really it's really important that we take a look at this maybe through the eyes of Martin Luther King Jr. if we can. He wanted equality. He wanted us to be judged by the content of our character. He didn't want to worry about skin color and race. But I think that you would agree with me, and this first time we've spoken, maybe you don't, Obama came into office and instead of, you know, of course, for, first he was going to, you know, send the rising tides back and he was going to solve the, the problems of the heal world. The earth. Right, exactly right. He's going to heal the, heal the earth just by putting his hands up in that big coliseum that he built. But at the end of the day, what he really did was for eight years, he, he played revenge politics. He said, yeah. now we get ours. Now that I'm in the White House, we're going to do what makes up for all the bad things that happened to our people all of these years. Forget the Civil Rights Act of 1964, the Voting Rights Act of 1965. Forget 100 years earlier, Republicans tried to make it more even, and the Democrats said no. And forget the Democrat Party history, because now I'm the leader of the, of the plantation. We're going to pretend the Republicans did this throughout our history. So where do we go from here? We do have a, a group, a generation. As I said, there were eight or nine when he took office. They're now 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years old, and they think they're the movers and shakers out there throwing, you know, their uh, their bricks through the, the Starbucks window because that solves the problem. How do we get people right. to, how do we get people to understand this is a great country and revenge isn't necessary, equality is. Can we get there? Well, Bar- Barack Obama, I remember he famously said that he wanted to fundamentally transform the country. And I'm, it occurs to me, you don't want to fundamentally transform things you love. I don't yeah. whisper to my, my wife, you know, honey, I love you so much. I want to fundamentally transform you. <laughs> you should probably slap me across the face right. as well. She should. <laughs> right. You, you, you have to recognize something about bigots. And I think that what the, the left is engaging in here is just rank bigotry. The thing about bigots is sometimes the bigots are right about the other guy. The thing is, they're just, they, they don't understand anything about themselves. <laughs> so they kind of like right. the critics. You can say, yeah, that other guy, he's terrible. He's no good. He's rotten. Well, what about you, buddy? You know, maybe you can pull the plank out of your right. own eye before right. you try to get the speck out of someone else's. In the broad scheme of the world, what this civilization and, and our nation in particular has done, ha- the virtue that we have exhibited, the the wonderful things that, that we've done for so many people uh, are, are without peer. They're, you don't see that anywhere else. And yet, if you're, if you're locked into this framework, this ideological framework that simply says you have to criticize, 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 you're never going to see that. I think the best example of this happened at the University of Notre Dame, right here in the US of A. I, I went there and actually gave a speech defending Christopher Columbus. And the, the speech obviously had no effect whatsoever because at Notre Dame, they have these beautiful murals depicting the life of Columbus. And it's the, the real life of Columbus. Yeah. It's, it's ex- depicting the man in all of his complexity. And it shows these various betrayals that happened. What the administration chose to do was to cover up those murals. And I think that sums up the culture right now. What the administration, what our educators are doing is just covering this up. There was an ISI study came out in 2007 of elite students that showed that graduating seniors at these colleges knew less about their own civics and history than incoming freshmen. People are becoming more ignorant over time. And if a nation and a civilization doesn't understand its own history, doesn't cultivate itself, right, doesn't have its own culture, then we are one to two generations away from losing that culture and losing that civilization. And that would be a damn shame. And we're filling that poll right now. It's Michael Knowles. He's the host of the Michael Knowles Show. Knowles Show. Go and find him. Go and watch it. Find him on YouTube as well. And I appreciate the time and the access. One thing you said earlier, and I'm almost out of time, but one thing you said earlier uh, really, really jumped out at me. And, and the fact is, you know, we're trying to relitigate so much that, that's happened in history, but you made a comment that nobody on the left wants to talk about today. There's slavery today. Not just sex yep. slavery, which is horrendous. There's literal slavery like in Ghana where Colin Kaepernick went to say he went back to the homeland or the motherland. While he was there, he didn't take a knee and didn't try to stop the slavery that's happening around him. And it's happening in many, many countries, many of them Islamic countries that have unbelievable fundamental rules in place, and nobody wants to bat an eye. We somehow have to relitigate something we solved 150 years ago because that makes them feel better. So if you don't mind, give me just the last comment, 20 or 30 seconds before I wrap. 
There's a great irony, which is that now the radicals who want to tear down our civilization want to pretend that we invented slavery and we're the unique group that ever practiced it. But in fact, the opposite is true. The defining feature of the West is not that we invented slavery. We didn't. It's that we abolished it. We're the only civilization right. that ever did abolish it. And I think we ought to focus on that aspect of our history because it tells you so much more about the rest of it. So glad you made time today. It was very important for me to get you on a Columbus Day. Thanks a million, Michael. Let's do it again soon, can we? That sounds great. Thanks so much. Hi, brother. Appreciate you. We're back after this in the Joe Pag Show. Stay right here.